What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? This is Dark Peach here. This is my first vlog. Even vlogs, even though vlogs usually consist of seeing somebody's face, but to me, I feel kind of. And you guys know what I look like anyway. I'm not. I'm gonna do this my way. So I'm just gonna use this picture here. But um, yeah, I'm just here talking about Katar and how it went for me and all that stuff. So yeah, let's get right down to it. Katar, I did not do as well as I wanted to. Like, I put in a lot of hours practicing in the lab, you know, making up new stuff and trying to apply it to my gameplay, like the, um, the air dodge cancel, I believe that's what it's called, which pretty much when you air dodge, within frame 2 to 4, you can de-drop an item. Like in tournaments, tournament matches, I didn't abuse that like one time. Like, all this stuff that I know how to do, I don't do it in, you know, matches and, you know, play like a freaking coward. Like, I have, because, like, I, vi I kind of vision things going wrong before they even happen. Or even though they will never happen, like, I, I just see, like, visions of it. Like, I have one of the worst cases of anxiety. And, yeah, it's, like, it, it's kind of OP. But, yeah, so... A lot of stuff that I practice, 50% of it, I say, about 50% I didn't use. So I kind of limited myself. I'm like, alright, SK time, I'm practicing to go hard. Freaking, you know, cause some upsets, plays high with a freaking hard to use character. And, you know, I go there and I'm just like, you know, I'm just giving 50%. Like, really? So, um, yeah, um, in bracket, I got knocked into the losers round one early. I lost to this guy named Negger. He's a Canadian Canadian Diddy in Game and Watch. Now the first match basically I S beat early, like at fifty no, like like twenty, thirty percent. Like I S beat early. And the whole day while I was there, even in front of you, I'm just S being like a madman. I don't know what it is. I wanna up B and then I just get side B's. And then there's times where I can't make it back because I usually try to recover low, so I can't really get on, you know, hit and whatever, and try to get like the perfect sweet spot, even though the game has auto sweet spot, I still go for the perfect one, it's hard for me to, it's hard for people to hit me when I do it that way, so when I, when you try to go for that, and if you get a side B, you most likely cannot make it back, even though with Peach's, um, even though you have a second jump, because Peach's second jump is not all that, and there's a lot of cooldown time on the side B, so I can't really, um, well, there's not that much cooldown time compared to probably like melee, melee peaches high B. But either way, perfect sweet spot on the ledge with the up B, recovering low. If you side B, you don't make it back. So that's what was happening. So yeah, the first game was against the Diddy. That happened, but I managed to bring it back because I noticed he had a rolling and sidestepping habit. Like he would do it a lot. So. I just say, like, you know what, I'm going to just be patient and just abuse it because that's the first thing I look for in a player. If you like to roll and start stuff a lot, I feed off of that. Like, I literally feed off, off of that. And I just play a game just to bait it and then punish OD. So, even though that early side D, um, um, SD happened, I just capitalized on his habits and then just punished it and then I brought it back. So then game two, he goes game and watch. I'm like, okay. Now, game two, I don't know what was going through my mind, but things just weren't going well. Things kind of got worse than the first game. Like, a lot of um, tech errors, you know, misspacing moves. I don't know. Things were just going pretty junky. And I got two stops there. So, I was like, okay. Pretty much just thought about what was going on. And I said, alright, I got this. So, went to game three. And I took up the first stock kind of early. Like, I was I was just going in, took up the first stock kind of early. And after that first stock, I don't know, I think the jitters hit me. A lot of things, I just started playing, like, OD rush down. And he just got free hits because he's just a character. You can't just rush somebody down. Her move design is not like that. Like, you know, she's very vulnerable in the air. Her moves are slow. I mean, they have range, and they're pretty safe on block. But just going in, throwing them out. They're, they're slow. Like, with her, you gotta condition somebody to block. You don't condition your opponent to block. You can't just go in and jump in on somebody, no matter what character they are. 
It could be the worst character in the game. You can't just go and jump in on somebody because they have moves with range and they're fast. I can just snuff you out for free. So, um, yeah, that was going on and I lost my stock. So it was pretty much even. So I was like, alright, let me calm down. I calmed down, took off the second stock. You know, took the second stock off. So I'm like, okay, I'm good now. Um, and then I guess it happened again. So he took that stock off. So we are last stock and whatever. Um, I'm going in, I've made like probably one error or something, took a few percent of damage, and then I get knocked off stage. So here, I'm like, alright, I'm going to recover low, I'm not going to recover high, it's, it's best to recover low. I go low, I try to up B, I get a side B and die, and I can't make it back. So, with that, I was pretty, I was pretty disappointed, pretty depressed about it, and I just basically said, you know what, losers, everybody's dying. Like, there will be no survivors of losers. No survivors. Like, even though I was, like, mad that that happened, and I felt, I felt like crap, at the same time, I was just, like, I was fired up. I'm like, everybody's dying. So, and also, I took advantage of that, because, like, you know, in losers, especially round one, you should get knocked out. There's gonna be, you know, a lot of players that are just starting out. You know, they don't know much about the game and whatever. Not to insult them, I'm not insulting them. This is nothing like that. I'm not that type of, you know, player like a lot of, you know, douches in the community. But I just say, you know what, I'm gonna just take this opportunity to find out just what the heck is going on with me. Like why is this happening? And just brush up on tech skills and whatever. And you know, just go on point treat treat the, treat this first loser special like you you know, you in training mode. So and losers, I had to play uh, a Ness, a Ness slash Rob, I believe. I don't know his name. If you are watching this video, and you know, remember the matches. I do apologize for not remembering your name, dude. But yeah, good stuff if you if you come across this video. Good games, man. Um, so yeah, I beat him, and then I had to fight. I think Obi. He is a Meta Knight player from. Maryland, I believe. Yeah, men I play for Maryland, Virginia, what that region. I um I two old him and then I had to play Junebug. And Junebug the matches were pretty pretty close, pretty intense. We went back and forth. But I managed to pull off the win against Junebug game three. And Junebug was pretty much the biggest win I've ever gotten and you know, the history of and my whole career of playing Smash. Like, this is a guy that has given high level players so many problems. And he's even beaten people like M2K. The robot M2K, he's even beaten his Meta Knight, the freaking Lucario. Like, that's, that's, that's kind of crazy. And for someone like me to be a guy like him with, heart, with a hard to use character as speech, and even a matchup that I don't, I say slightly in Lucario's favor. Just because if either of us make a mistake, he can punish harder. Like, it's a pretty much camping zoning game, but if either of us make a mistake, he pretty much gets rewarded more than I do. So, yeah, I managed to, to do that. Like, everybody was hyped. I told people they couldn't believe it. They looked at me like, are you joking right now? Like, are you serious? Did you just actually beat Jubuk? I'm like, yeah, I beat him in three. So, um, you know, everybody was hyped, they were like, yo, that's crazy, like, even to today, I'm still hearing, like, yo, this, how, you beat Joomba, that's freaking amazing, you know, this and that. So, yeah, I was pretty happy about that, and I was pretty, feeling pretty fired up, like I said, when I went to losers, like, everybody's dying, I'm, there will be no survivors, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so after that, I had to play Seabrick, Seabrick, decides to go DDD. I was expecting his MK. If he would have, with his MK, I was like, alright. I know exactly what to do, like, versus MK. Because when I went to losers, I had a game plan versus MK. Like, I know exactly how I'm going to treat this matchup and, you know, just go ham on MK. So he decides to go DDD. When he went DDD, I felt a little better. I'm like, alright, this is, um, I can do this. Like, I know exactly how to deal with DDD. I know what to do when he, you know, tries to go for the, um, the bear wall, you know, wall me out with bear, forward tilt, all that other stuff, I, 
know exactly how to deal with every option that DDD has just tries to throw in at me and then how I can like counter it deal with it so I can start something like you know um but yeah um so the match starts me and Seabrook were pretty much going at it you know back and forth we're both at like high percent and whatever um I was in a position where I was trying to um you know frame trap him or trick him to throw out a move so I can get a hit so I'm like alright at this position Usually, DDD, I'm over him, he's just gonna throw out also. Like, pretty much all, like, a lot of DDD, like, try to do against this character. So I'm like, alright, he's gonna do this. So let me, um, back away a little bit and try to, you know, space myself so, in the case that he does throw it, you know, I'm gonna just get a free punish. Because I knew for a fact he was gonna throw out the And he did throw out the up so I'm like, okay, got it. But, I kind of goofed on like spacing whatever something happened there so he got the kill I think I died like at 104 so I was like okay got the ult so I'm like alright yeah I, I done goofed there whatever this, this is not over I'ma just go ham on him and for some reason I don't know what happened I think I something just hit me out of random like the nerves the jitters they just they were so bad where I couldn't control myself. I literally couldn't control myself. I couldn't play anymore. I couldn't focus. It happened at random. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And then right there in my whole mind, I'm just thinking like, okay, what's going on? I can't, I can't play. I can't focus. I feel so lost. Like, he just throwing out bears. I know exactly how to deal with bears if DDD throws out bears. But when I was playing there, I felt like I didn't know. Because usually what happens with me is basically if I try to throw out... I mean, what happens with me is, if I know how to deal with a situation, and I blank out like that, pretty much, all that knowledge is gone. I feel like I definitely don't know what to do, like, what the heck was going on. And right there, what I remember me doing is, he's throwing out bears, I'm just sitting back throwing turnips. Like, that's not doing anything. Okay, I'm keeping him out, you know, I'm forcing him to block, but I'm at a distance where I can't punish those blocks. And if he's blocking, or sidestepping, or jumping, I'm not getting anywhere. I am down a stock. I have to go in, get close in, and start something. Me throwing turns is not doing nothing. And that's basically what I was doing for five, like, three, five minutes. I remember me doing that. I mean, I'm racking up a lot of damage, but still, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm down a stock, yo. I have to do something. He's still at three. And right there, I'm like, okay, I didn't know what to do. And I... Like I said, I can tell you right now, like, all the options I could have done to get in. Like, I know exactly how to deal with that stuff. But I, I couldn't. So I literally froze. And then I'm looking to the side. And then I just see all of, you know, Florida, you know, near, you know, Seabrick. There's probably, like, probably one or few cheers going on. And I just, I don't know, man. I cracked. I literally cracked. I couldn't play. So he two stocks me. And then we go to game two. He gets me off the stage, game two, and I'm coming down, and Seabrick, he just throws out a forward smash. I see the forward smash. I literally see it. All I had to do was just back away and recover low. I decided to challenge it and throw out a fair out of all moves, a 16 frame move. 17 frame moves, 17 frame moves, max range. Max range, 17 frames. Regular range, 16. I decide to challenge it and I die like probably 60 something like early percent after that I couldn't play I literally that's it I was done I was my mind was was mentally crushed like I just got mind crushed like the way you know freaking Yugi does it like that's what happened to me I just got mind crushed that whole smash after that I could I couldn't play anymore I literally couldn't I just started going in like that whole set he just literally got damaged mostly because of chain grabs like I couldn't space any of my moves because I'm like I know if I fair him he's going to grab me like that's what everybody tries to do always grab me and I know like if I fair it's zero on block zero on block basically means me and my opponent can move at the exact same time so if DDD throws out a grab it's six frames my job is two I'm gonna just slap the shot like I 
I couldn't even space the moves properly. Like I fall at wrong times where the move lags. If you if you fare at a wrong time, the fare is gonna lag. Like a lot of people don't know that, but yeah. And I just did it too high, too early, and then he just got free grabs. Like I literally just threw that set away. So I get too stuck there again, and I just felt like complete shit. Like I felt literally like complete shit. I I can't believe that I had a pretty good shot of advancing in bracket and taking out Seabrick and I just threw it away. So I was just really trying my best not to feel, you know, down, crushed, whatever, within, um, you know, me losing that set. Like, I put in a lot of time and work in the lab to come out here at a tournament like this and just go ham with a freaking hard-to-use character, man. And I just didn't do it. Like, even till this day, it still kind of, it still bothers me. Like, everybody was saying, like, yo, don't worry about it, you freaking beat Junebug. That is crazy, son. You beat Junebug with freaking Peach, dogs. Like, who does that? That's ridiculous. And even with that, it's still hard for me to be happy about the event because, you know, cause, like, I don't know why that bothers me so much. I guess it really bothers me because I have a pet peeve of letting people get away with stuff. Like, when people get away with things, they kind of, like, pisses me off. And that match, I kind of felt like, you know, alright, I beat somebody like Junebug. So, pretty much, you know, I should be a freaking threat. I should be on my game. But I played this guy, like, if I had no clue what the heck to do. Like, like if I just started the game. And that w that's what disappoints me. Like, I literally just, I feel like I just threw away the match. kind of feel like Seabrick didn't even have to try to beat me. And pretty much like game two, that's how it was. Because I just went down, I rushed him, I couldn't space my moves properly. And he just got free grabs. Like, literally, he got free grabs. Any tech, whatever I tried to do, I could not space at all. And he just grabbed me for free. He was just throwing it out there and I got grabbed. So I took a lot of damage and then off the stage and whatever. Oh, and to mention, um, on my last stop, game two against Seabrick, I SB. Like, I literally SB. Like, I'm telling you, I was, the uh, I was the SB king that day, man. Like, people, when they say my name short, they call me DP, you might as well call me SBP, because that's exactly what was going on. I was just SB, like, like, crazy. So, yeah, that was, um... That was pretty much what happened at SK Talk with me and, you know, Bracket. Um, I've been trying my best to not let that loss get to me, but it, it's kind of hard, man. I mean, the only way I can kind of feel like alright for, you know, just playing like shit is basically just saying to myself, Alright, you lost that match, but at the same time, you beat someone who has given top level players more of a threat than the guy that you just lost to. So that's pretty much saying like, dude, you just you just need to be more on point next time. That's about it. Like, alright, you lost to this guy, but you also beat someone that's freaking freaking beating players like, you know, M two K. Like, you know, giving him a run for his money. And I think I think Jumba beat Ally too. I don't know. I think he's beating Ally as well. But yeah, a player like that and you beat him dogs. With Peach, of all characters, that's that's kind of saying a lot, man. With Peach, that's that's mad work, OD work, man. With that freaking character to freaking win against Lucario and somebody like Junebug. So yeah, I'm just trying to you know keep that in mind, but at the same time, like it it still kind of hurts. It it really does kind of hurt, man. But outside of that, um. You know, I got a lot of props for, you know, putting in work. Even when I was playing the first match, I remember False. After I beat on Negus Diddy, I remember False. I'm like, yo, you been in the lab, son? Like, yo, you on some stuff. And there were people coming around, like, when I was playing Friendly. They were asking, like, yo, is this PM? I'm like, nah, this is Brock. Like, oh, I thought this was PM. Because, like, the way you play Peach, it looks like you're playing PM. Like, you mad fast and technical. So I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, man, like, that that's what I do with this character, man, I, I, I go, I go nuts. 
but yeah, and you know, everybody, they were like just giving me mad props for me beating Junebug, and I've even had someone had me sign their book bag. Like on their book bag, they had like a whole bunch of, you know, top players, legendary players, and this dude, he literally came to me and he wanted me to sign his book bag. And I felt kind of honored, I'm like, wow, he wants me to sign his book bag with, you know, all these legends that signed his book back. He wants me to be on there with the legends and it kind of felt good. Like, it kind of made me feel like I'm, I guess, someone special in the community to, you know, a lot of players. And, you know, just someone that, you know, just sticks to their guns, man. Everybody always telling me, like, you know, no peaches whack, you know, this and that, she can't kill, she got no air dodge, just quit, you ain't never gonna, you know, play high, whatever. She's just a easy the easy character to beat up, she's sucking you up, and I'm just like, you know what, I don't care what you say, because when I play Peach, I don't play her at a skill level such as, you know, M2K, Amara, Mango, I'm not on that skill level yet, so I'm not gonna sit here and have you, you goons, tell me that with this character, I can't freaking do damage, like, you don't know that, and I don't know that because I'm not on that level yet. I'm still stuck at, like, mid-level play, I say. Like, I still consider myself a mid-level player. So, when I become a high-level player with the money mentality of, you know, top-level play and use this character and abuse all her techs and everything that I know I can do in a match and not just, you know, half limit myself and just do 50% of the hard stuff I've been working on, then we will see just how bad this character is or how far I can go and once I do that and I see how far I can go I'll be content with it even if I don't win even if um I can't you know place in the money or whatever the fact that I became a top player in general and I abuse everything that this character can do and I just presented it to tournaments and actually show the world and myself her potential and my potential in general as a player, then I'll say, all right, mission complete. I did the best that I can. I abused everything, and this is how far I can go. All right, this is good to know. Mission complete. I'm happy. You know. So until I reach that level, I am never ever going to listen to what people tell me when it comes to this character, even with matchups. Oh well, this matchup I think is bad for her because no, like I'm still not going to listen to. It. Because ain't nobody alive has ever played a piece that just abuses everything and is on a caliber with high level players. There isn't one peach alive out there. Okay, Slayers and KIA are good, but still, they're not, as players in general, they're not on the level that M2K, Mango, Doc PP, Ally, uh, you know, all that. They're not there yet. There isn't one peach on that level yet. So until someone gets there or I get there, I'm not going to listen to anything or matchups because matchups and all that stuff with this character is based on flowchart happy you know peaches or you know general stuff that people gonna see for years so they know how to deal with it you know that's that's pretty much what I always say to myself when I hear these you know stupid mid average comments so I just don't listen to me alright you can think what you want but it, it's bullshit stick to a thing I'm not gonna listen to it I don't care what you say um but yeah um so that's pretty much it with me and Katar. Um, it was nice meeting the people that I met there. You know, it was nice hanging out with you guys. Um, seeing some old faces, met some new faces. You know, made some new friends and all. So yeah, thanks for those that you know were hoping for the best of me and you know matches. You know, I just as of right now, I don't think I'm a strong player because you know tournament nerves. It's been like this for years. And when Seabrick, he had his crowd of Florida people, I was trying to get some of my people to come and watch the matches. But it was pretty hard because they were either doing their matches or I couldn't find anybody. And I had to start the match. I didn't want to hold up the bracket. The tournament was going long as it is already. So, I just can't fight alone. I'm, I'm not strong. I'm not meant to be strong as a player. And I think because of this, it kind of holds me back a lot. And with this problem, I'm always going to remain a, a mid-level player. Like, I, I'm never, with this, I kind of feel like I'm never going to hit, you know, high caliber player status. Like, I'm always going to remain mid-level, you know, all the stuff that I practice, and I know what works for sure, 
in tournament when it's time to whip it out, I just become a coward and just don't do it. Um, I don't know. It's just something that I guess I I need to work on somehow. I've tried many things. But I don't know what else to do anymore. I don't know what else to do anymore about it. But um, yeah. I guess I just gotta get to work. But as of right now, with um brawl, I don't know what the deal is. Um, because you know this game is kind of like seen as deathbed. But I'll save that for uh, another video. I mean, this video is already 25 minutes long. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to make it too long. But um, yeah. Final words. Yeah. Um, it. Other than that, it, it was pretty fun. You know, I'm glad I met some new faces. I'm glad I had a lot of people on my back, even people I would never expect. You know, just came up to me and be like, "Yo, do your thing. Congratulations." Like even Negger, the guy that beat me. Like, he was pretty hyped when he beat me, and, like, I saw his face reaction and everything, and I was like, oh. Like, even though I goofed. But even after I beat Junebug, he even came to me just, like, you know, gave me my respect. He like, yo, good shit, dogs. He gave me a handshake out of random. And, yeah, um, uh, yeah, I, I guess that's it. So, you know, thanks for those that, you know, supported me in the community. I, some of you guys made me feel special, made me, like, Thank me for my stuff. Thank me for, you know, just never giving up with this character, man. Just keep doing your thing. Like, say, I get a lot of stupid, dickheaded comments with um, Peach in general or her matchup or just the game. And I'm just like, you know, I don't care, man. I don't care to, I don't care to change your opinion. I don't care to, you know, do, to please you. Like, I do it for me. I do it just to state and show that this character is actually, you know, better than what you do think she is. And I'm going to prove that one way or another. And I'm also going to prove to myself that with her, I can do damage. And I could be, you know, a top player and just go hand with, you know, my favorite Nintendo character. So, yeah, with that said, um, thanks for watching. Well, listening, I should say, because you're just watching a picture. Um, and I will see you guys next time. If you guys enjoyed this vlog, as well as my other content. You know, you can follow me here, or subscribe to me here. You can also follow me on Twitch and Twitter. All that will be in the link description below. With that said, God bless, and take care of yourselves.